Oh, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Ugh. Not feeling the greatest today, but we'll see. <coughs> I think somebody's on stream. Somebody in chat? Hello? I thought I heard somebody join chat. Um. Wait for uh, our co host to get here. Hello? You guys hear that? Oh. Uh, um, um. Hello. I hear people coming in and out of the Discord. Uh, oh, see, hear that? Somebody's coming in and out. Somebody don't want to come in and out. I don't think we have anything scheduled uh, on the battle sketches for this week. There's nothing so far. So I guess we'll take a poll. Uh, I could work on my... I got a Bernie drawing I want to do for the Miami Heat. Hello, Mr. Flowers. Good to see you today. Uh, it's raining here in Taipei. There's been some earthquakes. Uh, nothing that bad. More aftershocks now. Still. Uh, What else? Hmm. Other than that, just trying to stay busy. Trying to knock this out. Let's see who else. Uh, Dr. Midnight, how you doing? Good to see you. Get the usual compliment, the crew. No, known as the Chain Gang. Chain Gang. Uh, technically, somebody else said that first, so I guess it'll stick. It's not like I made that up. Jamie O'Dell, yo, 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 what's up? What's up, Jamie O'Dell, all the way from NYC. Dr. Midnight from... Uh, Northeast Connecticut, Rhode Island. Uh, I have a little <coughs> nothing. I think it's allergies, but we will see. It's a little bit of phlegm. Massachusetts, that's right. I hope you're not a Jamie might be into the Knicks. Just trying to figure out some... Uh...
some drawing here while while we're waiting for our co-host to jump online. <clears throat> Let's just draw some backgrounds using uh, Procreate. Kind of like a twitch. Is it frozen? Is the screen frozen? Jeremy Stoltz Creations, how are you doing? Kevin P. West, all the way from Detroit City. Jeremy, where, where are you based? Rain. Can you guys hear the rain in the background? It's coming down pretty hard today. Might sounds like there might even be some th lightning and thunder. Well, who is uh? <clears throat> What do you think of the new... The, did they reveal all of the Lions uniforms this year yet already? I think they did. I think I saw something like that. There's some new uniforms in the NFL this upcoming season. I think they just announced the, uh, the Denver Broncos uniform. And um, Houston Texans getting a new uniform. And helmets. Uh, I was a little let down by the... The Denver Nuggets uniforms. I don't know how you guys feel about that. The black and blue. Yeah, so they have like a predominantly like blue, black, blue base now. Uh, black, uh, they have a, a darker helmet too. Is it a black or blue helmet? I forgot. But uh, the Denver, the Denver Broncos one, uh, you know, because when the one that they had before, it was so revolutionary, with the uh, piping that come that came up the sides. Uh, that this new one is rather, it's really just the shoulder striping, that really is kind of any different. Uh, so you know, it's, and it's not really even like that predominant. Like, if you look at the Houston Texans. Like, at least their shoulder piping comes out to be like horns, right? Uh, to mimic the horns of the, the Texans. Dr. Midnight, thank you for liking my drawing on Instagram. I used what you taught me and drew different roughs until I settled on the one I like. Yep. Uh, we're all here to support each other. Uh... We're all here to support each other. Uh, watch my up speak. And uh, it's a habit that you have to build, Dr. Midnight. Uh, don't settle for the first drawing that you come up with or for the first rough. There is no timeline right now. Uh, or uh, deadline, right? So always uh, take your time, explore different options. This is the mo This is the uh, time to kind of uh, be open to, quote unquote, make mistakes. Uh, you want to be able to kind of explore as many options as you can before jumping into something that's final. Um, the Texas H helmet. Yikes. Yeah, the H1 is a little weird. I think they're going with these city kind of uh, what they do with the, with the basketball ones. I do like the color scheme. It's a little bit different. It's the light blue and the, almost the hot pink or the <coughs> bright red. Uh, and it is a little bit different. Um, but uh, we'll see how they 
also look. I mean, the other ones that I really like, uh, I don't know if you guys follow sports uniforms, but um, the AFL, the Arena Football League, uh, has been launching their their new uniforms for the summer on Instagram, and they have been, in my opinion, extremely disappointing. Uh, this is the same template, um, and... Uh, For all the different teams, just different colors, and most of the colors are the same. They're kind of in the bluish range, blue hues, and uh, just quite disappointing because the Arena Football League used to have some um, pretty cool uniforms, like the the Iowa Barnstormers. Uh. <clears throat> James Quo, thank you for the resub. Thirty three months. How you doing, James Quo? Um, Grand Rapids, uh, Grand Rapids Rampage. Kevin P. West used to be season, to season ticket holders, and you know the Arena Football program uh, product is uh, it's a little bit different. Then you're not going to get the, I don't think you're going to get the same level of like competition or athletic competition as you are, uh, or or skill. Uh, let's just say not competition, but. Uh, as the uh, like NFL or even uh, XFL, or, which is now the UFL, um, so they combined with the uh, uh, the USFL uh, this year, and um, so my my complaint was that uh, you know these uh, kind of smaller market teams or or leagues per se is that. Uh, where they're going to market themselves is the identity of the the individualness of the teams themselves and that the perceived money that they might save in perhaps using the same uniform template i i think is minimal um I mean the uniform helm, the helmets. They're all this. There's either a black helmet or a white helmet. Hey, what's up, just some dude? How's it going? Is this James? Uh, I think my throat. Hopefully, my throat is only because I've been up all night, trying to work. Um, not getting too far. Trying to work, taking a nap, trying to work, taking a nap. Uh, seem to be in one of those uh, Groundhog Day, quicksand, uh, non-productive uh, modes today. Sometimes I, I found myself tonight... <coughs> Um, taking a nap, waiting for the stream, uh, oh yeah, Courtney's not going to be on this week, oh, you are coming on, Courtney, okay, uh, <clears throat> James Quo this says, uh, yes, there's been a bunch of aftershocks in Taipei, I think Mr., well, Mr. Fletch Chu Fong is in Taipei. I saw him the other uh, the other day, and um, for dinner. And uh, last night, there were a few earth. I think there were nine. I think they said there was around ninety aftershocks. Ninety one aftershocks uh, yesterday evening. Um, still in the same area where the initial earthquake was a couple weeks ago in Hualien on the eastern coast of Taiwan. Um, but they were uh, much smaller. Um, but uh, because Mr. Fletch uh, was in a high-rise hotel, fancy hotel, uh, the the shaking was a little bit more um, scarier, <coughs> quote unquote, scarier for for Mr. Fu Chu Fong. Uh, So, we'll see. 
I guess still waiting for the big one. The thing with the earthquakes again, like to living in California, uh, we've experienced a few earthquakes over the years. Um, they just don't last as long as as the ones here. Uh, the ones here are a little bit smoother, at least the ones that I've felt so far. They're very smooth. Uh, I'm sure if you're in a high rise and I think Fletch was on the 16th of 18th floors. Uh, the higher up you get, uh, the buildings are meant to sway or built to sway and sustain uh, for these kind of earthquakes, um, you know, for the building codes. I can only imagine how, I'm sure I'm only on the third floor of the building. Uh, yo, 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 DYL Pickle, how you doing? Uh, I think somebody just jumped on. Hello? Who do we have? Who do we have on chat tonight? Anybody? Hello? Fletch? Mr. Chu Fong? Uh, even in Taiwan, Fletch's internet connection is uh not not as reliable what about the hotel connection fletch oh hello what was that fletch you have your video on uh it's raining cats and dogs tonight. sean are you on today Mr. Chen, or am I having audio? Hello? I think that's, was that Fletch? Or was that Sean? One static for Sean, two statics for Fletch. <clears throat> Yo, Jimbo, good to see that that sounds like Sean. Good to see you, Jimbo. Sean, let me. All right, let me let me let me turn off the VPN. Give me one second. Um, I always forget to turn off the VPN. Maybe that's what's creating it. Hello? Oh, that's a little bit better. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, we can yeah. hear Fletch. We can, can hear Sean. Can you hear me, Bernard? Yep. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. We're in business. Were you guys trying to get on earlier and I just couldn't hear you? or? Yeah, pretty oh. much. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, Fletch, how are you doing? Good, good. I was saying before, but you couldn't hear me because of your connection, not my connection. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm only going to be uh, just tell my say hello. I got to take care of some things over here. All right. Taipei. So yeah, yeah. All right. Well, good uh, to hear your voices. You got the you got the notes I sent you, right? I did. I did. Okay. And uh, I took, you know, so she's on some medication now. So. Oh okay. Um, yeah. So I appreciate it. Thanks, man. So did you guys go last night or? No, no, no. Well, today, this morning. So uh, to the pharmacy and uh, they, they told us that it was just this. So a uh, cold, a bad cold. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, my sister, she's, she's a warrior ward. So she was like fearing the worst. So it was pneumonia, but it wasn't. So right. anyway. Yeah. But my... just we on the safe side, you know. <laughs> My throat is a little raspy today. Yeah, yeah. Well, now she has, uh, before she was just a, a cough, but now she has a phlegm. Oh. And uh, so, yeah. So it just developed. Yeah. All right, well. How you guys doing? Doing all right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've been up all night trying to work. But, uh. Cool. You're on a deadline? Yeah. I've been on a deadline. 
Oh, yeah, always. Always. Always on the line. Well, you know, when you're in your mid-50s, you you can't do this anymore. It's just like, I don't know. I I think it's just inhumane. It's tough, man. You know, this this comic book life is uh, is grueling. And then uh, it sucks. you gotta you gotta be into the story. You gotta be into the the artwork. Uh, you know, there's a moment momentary. Uh, at times, I feel like uh, again that moment of uh, when an athlete can no longer run or jump or perform at a level that they're used to when they're younger. Um, it's scary. <laughs> Well, it's like you're a punch drunk boxer and you get knocked out when you get knocked out you know, that's when you think you uh it's a, it's basically a decline into death basically right well your skills may have slowed down but the skills are still there you just have to you know, know your own pacing and know what you uh, it's it's a little it's a it's a, it's it's a struggle at times it's a struggle there are, there are moments where, like, it's, uh, I ask myself, like, have I ever even drawn a comic book before? Um, you there? You're, yeah. you're cut off. Hello? He, yeah. He's just, I think you just have to, um, do it for a little bit and then it comes back to you. So. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, if you draw every single day, then every day it's like a routine drawing, but then you take like a week off and then when you get back to it, it's like, oh my God. It's like you forget everything. Yeah. Well, I often think about like, uh, uh, is it you know physically it's it's unsustainable, right? So there's very few oh, people that me. that just constantly draw monthly books. I mean, you can name you can probably name all of them in, in one hand, right? So, yeah. uh, like Greg Capullo does it. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say Capullo because you come up with the same names all the time. It's Cap- uh, Capullo, Bagley, Bagley. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dan Mora right now is drawing two books a month, but, but he's he's, but a he's a younger young, guy. Right? He's a yes. younger guy. Well, he's like thirty. I think Dan Mora is like thirty. His thirties, yeah. But he's he's still young. You know, he doesn't have that much mileage on him, right? Like Capullo, you know, started when we started, Sean, uh, in the early nineties, yeah. and. Um, He's been, you know, yeah. cranking at a particular yeah. rate. Um, I think he's in mid fifties now, but he he knows his style. He knows his, you know, how long it takes him to do, to yeah. do a book, and you know, he, you know, he has a, he has <coughs> the right the right partner picks him and uh, and he, off to the races. Well, and Capullo, I mean, not again, nothing, uh, nothing against him. He's, you know, he's penciling, so he has an inker. Yeah. Uh, so maybe I need to shift to that, but again, I don't I haven't developed a relationship with an inker in years now. That uh, to be able to trust someone, you're uh, gonna hate it, <laughs> huh? You're gonna hate it. You never really got along. Yeah, I yeah. actually I never got along with my inkers either. Yeah, I always yeah. thought, Sean, man, you should have just inked your own stuff. Or I never liked the inkers that they gave you. You know, I don't think you're, you're <laughs> I don't think your stuff should be inked by a brush guy. I've always said that since day one. Um, yeah, well, I ink my own stuff these days, but I think the key is to um, to to do it at a sustainable pace. So, yeah, um, for me that means like no more than six books a year. Unfortunately, yeah. Well, but you know your piece, so you know you know what uh, what you can produce. You know, yeah. You just uh, marry into money. That's that's right. the key. <laughs> I have to draw at least ten a year, so. Because um, it's a numbers game, it's not a yeah. You know, you only get paid by the by the by the project, so it's uh yeah, it's, it's cool. It's it's ten a year plus also you know pinups or covers or convention appearances and stuff like that. But yeah. it's all supplemental income. income. Yeah. But I mean, I just uh, see hmm? whether you can switch over um, entirely to um, commissions. Uh, possible. I mean, commission rates are going up, but I don't know. You know, it's it's a it's scary, right? I mean, it's a well, covers and commissions, and then uh, you know that guy. There was a guy who was on the Ink Pulp podcast who is who took time time off to create his own book, that Axe Wielder John thing, yeah. and 
he, he didn't have money saved up, but the way he did it was he's like a big fan of artwork. So he would buy a lot of Frank Quietly artwork, spend a lot of money on it, and then resell it, hold it, yeah. and then resell it later. And uh, and then he, now he's kind of just doing his own book at his own pace. And it doesn't really bring in the money initially, but then he gets his money from elsewhere. Uh, and then the key is um, the return for his um, drawing time might come like 10 years later. Mm. But he owns the property, so yeah. what? It's a weird, hmm? it's a weird game though because you have to, you know, either work with a big two or have a big project at the, a smaller publisher and just to build your name up. And when you build your name up, then you could, you know, you're you're more apt to get more commission work. Um, hmm. it, it's a weird, it's a weird cycle, yeah. right? And the number yeah, of I mean, uh, yeah. the number of books that the big two are right publishing now. is decreasing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, also, the lure of the big two is is not what it used to be when we when exactly. we left. So that's yeah. that's kind of hard too. Yeah. Right now, it's all you know. If, if you can get a, a deal uh, from Hollywood, you know, where they pick up your your project or something, you know, then, then that's with any company, not just the big two. You know, they have a lot of deals uh, like <laughs> IDW or uh, Boom. They all sell or Dark Horse. They're always shopping stuff in Hollywood. But, yeah, Dan is doing, uh, Dan Moore is doing all digital, it looks like, right? Um, so that's the other thing, too, is like uh, mostly digital now, but you don't have the uh, nah, original art. He, he's no? more of a hybrid, so he, he produces, you know, like splash pages will be, you know, pen and ink. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, any of the other pages that, are, you know, you will will sell in the secondary market, he does digital, right? Or right. He, he, you know, yeah, so... Yeah, but you know his strength is that the guy can draw so well that he yeah. doesn't have to like do trial and, and trial and trial and trial and then keep on fussing with it. He can pretty much hit it the first time out, and it's a great, great figure with a great silhouette, and um, he can just arrive at the right decision faster than most people. Right. Anyway, let me run. It's good to catch up with you. Yeah, All right. And, um, See you next week. Uh, I'll see well. you. I'll see you Thursday, Fletch. Yeah, I'll see you Thursday. Uh, I'll see you Thursday for drinks. You got it, brother. All right. All right. I'll see where I am. Bye. I won't be there. <laughs> no, Sean, we'll miss you. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Yeah. Doctor Midnight said he saw a video where Sandra Hope says she's going to stop ink stop inking soon. Well, Sandra, I think also she's a writer now too, right? Isn't she writing? Didn't she? Yeah, create like an animated never, series never, never really even um i mean she didn't go into this job to, to ink she didn't have any particular love for inking she said jim lisa looked at her handwriting and said like you look like you can ink and she's a great inker because she inks some of the best but then i just don't know if he didn't love it from early on it's, it's easier to leave it you know yeah so the the big two the Number of books that they're publishing a, a month or decrease actually half from uh, a few years ago from pre pandemic. So they're around, uh, I think they're around 40 now, uh, 40 books a month. Oh, wow, that's it. Um, Jeez. Used to be, we used to be, well, they used to be like over a, a, a almost uh, in the hundreds. Yeah, 80 100. to 100, yeah. I mean, when the new 52, there was at least 52 <laughs> from D.C., plus annuals or specials. So you're looking at around, I think, at least easily 80, 75 to 80 a month. And now there's you're around 40. So um, Yeah, I mean, I think in general, that's, that's a good thing from a business standpoint because they've been s spread too thin before. I mean, really, if you think about Marvel and D.C. and you want to build a, a line of comics, how about like 10 books? a month um, but that just leaves a lot of artists out of work but if you're just thinking about the Econ line yeah. the collection the economics yeah. thinking you know, yeah or just the fact that you just want to have a tight universe but you don't want to have like so many books out there competing with each other going in all different directions and you kind of lose the focus of your brand you know so you know, just kind of niche down and like you, if you're open up a restaurant you don't want to serve like sushi and pizza and you know <laughs> like Indian food it's better well, if you, I you focus on, on yeah how how many how many books were out back in the 80s or 90s I forgot 
in the 90s, I know, well, we shouldn't say the 90s. I think how many books were out in the 90s a month by the big two? Does your Jimbo know? Like when, when, you know, when I first started collecting or most of us started collecting at first in the 80s when we were younger, teenagers, um, there was only one X-Men book, the Uncanny X-Men. Although there were specials, there were annuals and there were, uh, there were much more annuals back then. That's one thing I don't think they do that much of anymore. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I I did spend this week, <coughs> or actually last week, uh, at a couple of meetings. There's some other projects that are in the, you know, cooking up. We haven't agreed on anything, but there could be some cool. some interesting news coming up. Uh, okay. And uh, some interesting projects. Uh, Sean, how's your how's your uh, well? You finished the Morocco project, right? Yeah, you missed our our meeting. Uh, I did. Our, uh, yeah. Morocco meeting. How was it? Uh, it was no big deal. I mean, this kind of telling you what to expect. Like, I think the good thing is, um, we know the hotel because they kind of leaked which hotel we'll be at. <laughs> oh. Okay. It's, it's five stars, baby. Five stars. I thought it was a. Uh, did it begin with an S? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, it's a five star hotel. All right. And and we're be, we're gonna be there for so many days. Like, well, how much does a five star hotel cost per night? Is it like a thousand bucks a night? Or something? Well, no. I think a couple hundred bucks. Three three hundred bucks. You would pay two three hundred bucks. Right? No, the Marriott would be like a hundred something. Um, oh really? Hundred fifty, two hundred bucks. I mean that's still a lot of money, but uh, I'm, it's also probably owned by the government. So yeah. the thing is, like a uh, a lot of these hotels, they're like actually, I think they're privately owned, uh, but then they're franchised. So, um, my former ex uh, brother in law owned the hotel in the uh, NYC area. Well, I think he still owns it. Um, so they built it. He built it. And then uh, I think it was like franchised. Right? So they had a, a name. You can also just open your, like a, your own boutique one if you wanted to. Uh, but because you franchise it, you get, I guess, um, bigger name recognition or I don't know. Are you drawing that car just out of your head? Yeah. I mean, uh, I've drawn this car before in a previous page, so I kind of know what the uh, front of the car, the back of the car looks like. That's crazy. Just winging it with a car. Well, I, got, I, got, I laid out the, uh, you know, you can see the sketch of the background there. Um, well, so there's so a little bit Marvel of perspective. Book. This is the Marvel book. Yeah. Oh. I see <coughs> maybe a storm back there in the, in the well, no, there. no storm, no storm. You're trying to okay. get trying to get some uh trying to get me in trouble here. Uh any any news in the comic book industry this week or last week? Yeah, it was there was uh well like there's the the the, the sexy salacious news which is basically like that AI and DC removing those books that are suspected. Oh, AI. right, yeah. Yeah, we're talking about that Axion guy. Your, Did we take a look at his artwork? Your buddy. Yeah. yeah. He doubled <laughs> down on it because they said, like, uh, this is AI. And he's like, nope, nope, no, sorry. And then he tried to prove it. And then I wonder if you can really tell it definitively just by looking at it whether it has, like, the AI footprints on it. Um, yeah. If it does, then he. He's doubled down on it, so then he'd be just basically a big fat liar, you know. Well, um, he but, doesn't. Do you know him? I mean, have you met him before? I, I, I do, and you know what's weird about him? Well, he's big time following Gong, yeah, follower, and uh, which means that he is a big time Trump supporter, yeah. not just a Republican, but a Trump supporter. And this industry tends to lean well; it overwhelmingly leans left, right? So. There you can count the number of Republicans on your hand in the in the comic business. So, 
um, the fact that he was thrown under the bus so quickly is probably a political thing. Like, like people just wouldn't mind seeing him just his career just fizzle away. You think? You think it's a? I don't know if I don't. You think that? I mean, because he hasn't really. <clears throat> He's been kind of toying around in the toil toiling around in the uh, in the comic book industry. Here's another topic of discussion, which I find very interesting. But uh, so, like, uh, whenever you talk to like uh, political leaning comic book creators, and they talk bad about the comic book industry, they're obviously referring to. A Marvel or DC, because of the their argument of wokeness or right or identity politics infused into, but a lot of times too. Um, at least when I talk about comic book industry, I I'm really referring to Marvel or DC, but then in order to get a lot of their messaging across, they include everything from uh, other. Second tier publishers like, uh, who would you say like oh, Boom? Or, or no, no, I don't think they even include Scholastic. I would think that they would include well, stuff like he, Dark Horse, Boom, Valiant, uh, yeah. Dynamite, and uh, also just regular, independent, smaller uh, publishers. So, um, so I, I've seen uh, podcasts or. Or streams where they talk about, oh yeah, the comic book industry. Uh, again, in the same tone when they're talking about comic book industry is referring to Marvel DC. They're like, yeah, the comic book industry, they're having problems paying their their artists, and that's why their books suck. And and but honestly, like again, I don't. I think it's a little bit disingenuous or misleading, because Marvel DC don't have problems paying people. Right. Yeah, there are corporations. So yeah, there's there's um, laws and checks and balances in place to keep that from happening. They and just wouldn't give you a contract in the first place if they have trouble, if they have trouble paying you. Yeah, and and the the companies that actually do have problems paying, I mean there are, um, the, but they would be kind of the mid to smaller tier, independent publishers. Uh, you and I have actually experienced some of that uh, last couple well, hey, of years. Let's name them. Uh, it begins with an H. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I was just saying it began <laughs> with an H. You think we don't have the name names. Uh, heavy metal. Uh, oh, they owe me uh, seven hundred eighty bucks. So uh, heavy metal sucks. Uh, it would never work for them. Um, and they're the only publisher that that um, have an outstanding um, balance on. They, they they owe me money, but they but it was a previous administration, and they just washed their hands of the whole deal. So. Yeah, and I have another company that owes me some money, um, about fifteen hundred bucks worth. Uh, Ouch. Um, you know, and it's like, well, how are you gonna collect? Uh, you gotta make a big stink about it. You gotta go public with it, or you know, or you try to resolve it. Live streams. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I did insinuate to to collect on on one of those companies. I said, well, you know, I emailed the uh, some of the guys, and I was like, well, you know, I see that you guys have a panel coming up in San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> uh, you know, it'd be interesting if you showed up at the panel, and then you, of course, they always they throw it to the audience for questions. You can just wait in line, and then uh, ask a question like, when are you guys gonna pay me? In front of everybody, but I don't know. <clears throat> They're gonna call on you like the the beard that um, the bearded man with the sunglasses right. raising his hand. Even yeah. question. Yes. So my understanding is you guys owe Sean Chan uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> and this has been an yeah. outstanding debt for uh, how many years now? <laughs> Four years, five years. Uh, yeah. Do you anticipate on on clearing this debt anytime soon? Um, and while we're on that subject of debt, um, here is another list of other creators that are possibly past due in terms of their collecting payment. It'd be rather ugly. So well, Courtney says she'll do it. She won't do that. Okay, the woman with the beard and the sunglasses back there. <laughs> no question. 
yeah. So, anyways, Marvel and DC do not have problems paying people, um, but uh, there are companies. Um, but again, but then those companies aren't necessarily saddled with the problem of wokeness, or at least they're very rarely ever discussed when the issue of wokeness or uh, identity politics or diversity um, is uh, frowned upon by a particular leaning audience which by the way <clears throat> uh, there is a rather particular particularly popular publisher independent publisher um, you know it's got like a few million launched with a few million bucks but or launched with a few few million in sales um, but as uh, you know what I'm talking about right Sean not really. I don't like this building. Is it one of those cooked books type thing? Uh, there's a possibility that it's kind of cooked. Um, there is a little bit of that going on, right? A little bit of cooking of the books. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the sales in general in comics are, are kind of low to the point where you can influence the sales just by like uh, personally buying a lot of them. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, because a lot of these, uh, yeah, you, you know, can't. There's no, so. there's no accountability of that, right? So I mean, uh, even the crowdsource funding, crowdsource funds, um, it could be insiders that are pumping up the the numbers. Yeah, I mean, we know of one guy that's actually well noted, not even on the right wing side, who had a Kickstarter, who uh, many people suspect goosed up their numbers um, to make it seem like uh, their projects are more successful. Anyways. Um, but this guy, I was looking at the sales. They have four books out. The first book sold uh, 42,000 copies. The uh, second book sold uh, 20,000 copies. Third book's 13. And the newest book that came out is only around 10. So again, the attrition, and this is over a course of a year, year and a half, a year, four books, uh, you can see that uh, the sales um, slowly decline. I don't know if it's um, the, the argument. I guess is uh, are they losing, retaining, uh, are they having a difficult time retaining uh, fans? Uh, are they uh, or readership? Um, you know, obviously the first one launched with a lot of fanfare, so. There was a lot of, uh, I guess, first-time comic book readers, right? That are buying the product to support a particular cause. Um, but now that the dust is kind of settled and they're four books in, um, the number of sales, again, and this is just going off of their site, uh, has followed and kind of dwindled down to about 10,000. So... Um, um. Is James Quo talking about your Sharon? What happened? Uh, James Quo said <clears throat> watching Taiwanese music videos. For oh yeah, she was in the Fire X. Oh uh, okay. Cool. Yeah, she was, was in that music video. Or? It was a music video last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the James Quo? Oh, that's the link to the yeah. So that's her. <clears throat> uh, that was last year, and then. Uh, there was a, they had a also a concert uh, that we went to in Taizong. It was pretty cool. I mean, it was a rock and roll band kind of, you know, and it was actually one of her favorite bands growing up when she was a teenager. So I think for what her. What did she do in the video? She plays, uh, the song is about, the song was a song written by the lead singer about him as a father and raising his kids so oh, okay so it's like um like um like an acting performance like yeah that. so you she played the daughter of you know and then kind of high school college and then getting married and then having a family of her own kind of thing and the father uh watching her daughter you know kind of uh grow up over the years so um 
and they have uh, the I think the the still of the <clears throat> the still frame. Which, by the way, I started upgrading the the stream. If you guys are on YouTube's, um, I started putting up new uh, uh, show banners. What do you, what do you call it? Like screen. Um, uh, when you look at the home page of the. Uh, yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah. So the one of her music video is like the sidewalks. The sidewalks here in Taiwan are painted green. Uh, and there's a uh, image of a man with a hat holding the hand of a little girl. So it's like a father and daughter. So on all the sidewalks in Taiwan, or most of them, I would say, um, it's on the street, right? So the sidewalk is painted onto the side of the street in green. And there's a white silhouette of a, a man with a hat, like a, basically a father holding the hand of the daughter uh, or, or the, their child. As the you know, so to indicate that this is a sidewalk for pedestrians, is that right, James Quo? Anyways. Is um is that Courtney? Hi. Uh, <coughs> I didn't know if you. I thought you you were. Uh, yeah, I thought you were busy Vegas today. Yeah. No next next oh. next next today. Yeah. First oh. first weekend of May. Oh. Work first week of May, Monday through Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> I just had work today. Work? What's mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Bernard. Yes. Are you drawing this with a perspective snap on grid or is this kind of just. Uh, right now I'm just freehanding it. I'm just eyeballing it. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. No I'm, just, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Um, are you allowed to show us this? And it's, it's just it's, background. It's not drawing the character. Yeah, it's just background. Mm -hmm. It's a storm. It's busy stuff. So, I mean, uh, and I'm going to blur it out eventually. So, it's not really measured, the perspective. Um, oh, okay. But I'm going to blur it out a little bit later on. So, uh, it's New York City. Interesting. Or is it? <laughs> so, Sean, now that you're done with the Morocco comic, are you back onto the uh, twenty-four-seven? Yeah, well, I'm doing. We're doing ten days of programming in, in Morocco, and I, that kind of makes me nervous because um, just a lot of. We're gonna get up on stage, and we have all that time to fill. So, um, we're, we're kind of putting on a performance and teaching stuff. I think a lot of it is <coughs> leaning on on you. Um, I'm not drawing on. I'm not good at drawing on stage, so I'm just making these assets to kind of have ready. Sounds like six keys. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, I have this huge uh, robot intersection um, background that we can draw. On top of oh okay so why don't you just use the time. those old marvel templates that you had that you created well this is um i just thought the crowd would really like it if it's robot um, yeah a scene from their own city yes yeah, so. okay all right so, uh, that's Going the deep. one you're gonna be drawing spider-man morocco and also designing the moroccan superhero based on uh the audience input uh -huh. as they call out characteristic and you'd be drawing it and then just slap it on top of this background and then you know we can make a, a cover basically in the time that they're watching mm. all right so yeah there's a lot of that stuff okay well we've collaborated like that before for the baltimore comic-con right did we where i've used your background <laughs> for a uh oh yeah for a piece so, okay. Uh, what should we draw today besides this? Uh, let's, let's draw another another figure on digitally. Um, any characters that are popular that I should draw or 
Deadpool, what about Wolverine, Chat? Extremely popular right now. Yeah, Wolverine. That was a really pretty cool uh, trailer. The Deadpool, uh, although there was a lot of cursing, a lot of f words in there, um, especially for Disney. I mean, mm, that's Deadpool. Have you seen it, uh, Courtney? I I am really bad at keeping up when movies come out, so I I didn't even know it came out yet. <laughs> well, it's a trailer. It's just a trailer. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, the movie could have con- like gotten into the theaters and left the theaters, and I wouldn't have seen it. So I've seen, uh, uh, you know what? No, I think the I've only seen the trailer from like a really long time ago. Have you guys seen? Have anybody here seen the movie Civil War? The the Marvel Marvel? <coughs> yeah. No, 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 no. There's a movie called Civil War from A24. Didn't it come out already? Or this oh, past weekend? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that came out already. Yeah, with uh, Kristen Dunst or something. Kristen like, yeah, Dunst, something like that. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. I watched uh, Fallout, uh, the first episode of Fallout um, on Amazon. Amazon Prime. You know, I never play. I played the the. Uh, I played the video game on the app on the phone. Where you're just building, um, you're just building the fallout shelters. There was none of the other components of the storyline, so, um, I don't. Re- I didn't really know what was going on, and. Uh, Eh, I don't know if I'm going to stick around for any more episodes. It's been getting good reviews, so I don't know if people here on stream have been watching it and enjoying it. Um, Golf Boys been watching a Sun- Shogun series. Uh, Beef Skeletons here. Uh, we released the Spider Man 2. Uh, And then I haven't watched any of the X Men ninety seven. So I heard that's really good though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to watch that, but what is it stream on? Disney Plus? Oh yeah. Me no have Disney Plus. I have have to find out whose Disney Plus I have. (laughs) I d I don't know. I use every other (laughs) mooch. Uh, oh, uh, oh, I, Sean, there's something I wanted to, I wanted to ask you offline. So, oh, just ask me here. Yeah, just ask me here. Uh, it's a little sensitive. Oh, is it about that rash in, in your nether region? No, 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 that one, that one, uh, resolve itself. Um, <laughs> sensitive. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, anybody in chat uh, have a, a suggestion on what to sketch today? Uh, or uh, Sean or, or Courtney, do you have anything you want to, you guys want to see? Mm-hmm. I kind of want to go to know. sleep. Anything <coughs> you I was thinking of something anime. Mojo. Kevin P. West said Mojo. James Quo says X23. Uh, D. Rogers is going to Tokyo. Tokyo Con. Tokyo Comic Con. Osaka Comic Con is next week. Uh, Tokyo Comic Con is in end of November. So. So you're not going to either of those? Uh, not Osaka. Maybe Tokyo Comic Con, but I'm not sure yet. Um, that's still too far out uh, to consider. So, I still need to contact the Baltimore guys. See if they'll get us uh, yeah. some space. When's Baltimore? <laughs> Baltimore is September 20th, 23rd? Or something like that. Uh. <coughs> 20th, something. So, like no that. one's coming for uh, San Diego Comic Con? Uh, I probably won't be there. You guys are just leaving me? 
That's fine. Yeah, well, Carl will be there. <coughs> Isn't Carl going to be there? Yeah, Carl will be there. They'll be yeah. promoting the new the new book. So Carl will probably hire you to, uh, to uh, push that book. Yeah. I know a lot of people who are dropping out of the convention, though. Like the other uh, DCD guys. They, I don't think they're going to be back. Oh, really? So. Yeah, at least that's what they told me. Uh, um, maybe they're going to change their mind, but so that... yeah, I don't know who Carl's going to be with. <coughs> if because they... he has more time to figure it out now. Is that breaking news? Yeah. Mm, I don't think so. I mean, maybe they... they'll be with VV. VV. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he knows them so. Oh yeah, he makes. He makes friends, so I'm sure he can grab a little bit of something somewhere. <laughs> All right. Yeah, anybody? Uh, did anyone? Did anyone decide on what to draw? Your Jimbo? Sean, is there any 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 characters that are in the spotlight? Well, I guess that De- De- Deadpool and Daredevil. I mean, they're Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, but any or the Cassandra King is that what her name is? I I posted a Cassandra Nova. Cassandra Nova, yeah. Yeah, I posted a. I drew her in in the uh, in one of the Heroes Reborn books that I did last year, last year or the year before, a couple of years ago. Uh, She's like a weird. It's like a. She's like a female Professor X kind of, but with like a huge head. Like her head is like extremely no bulbous. Hair. But that's in the comic book. <laughs> uh, the movie version. She looks like she has a normal head. So. Too bad I drew that page dig- digitally, otherwise I I could sell it. Make a little moolah. <clears throat> Uh, Sue Lee is announced as a new writer for the new Chitara series. Uh, Dr. Midnight, thanks for wow, the gift really? sub to Kevin P. West. He was like Sue Lee only a few years ago was on staff at, in production at Marvel. Like in the, in the, I guess, I don't know what she was doing at Marvel. <coughs> like graphic design work or something like that. And then she, when I met her, she was trying to uh, break out of that and, and then draw. And then so soon after drawing, um, now she's writing. So she's, she's, and I think she's represented now by with an agent. So really, that's, that's that happened really fast. Yeah. Oh, good for her. Writing agent. No, uh, um, for art, you know, like uh, I think she might be rep by the same people that rep Crease. Oh, I think uh, so. well, like those comic sketch art guys. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I remember she used to saying, hang out here. And, yeah. And then um, basically she would bid on, I mean, not what, like, like you were like giving away an old t-shirt. and. and she won and the uh, horse the horse drawing. Yeah. That's... What was the horse drawing that she won? Horse, that, horse now, Nightwing? Yeah. Yeah. Now so, she's... I think her, her big break was that she did that award-winning book with Amy Chu, that first vampire, Asian vampire. Oh. Well, I think it proves that if you if you come on the stream or hang out on the stream, you'll get work. Yeah. Right. <laughs> she made her name right here. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not too ashamed to uh, to plug that. Ghoul from I the Fall last series. Uh, a couple of days ago, I didn't watch it, but I don't know what the hell was he doing streaming. Oh, Jim! Jim streaming again. Oh. It was only like a couple days ago, I think, a few days ago. Oh. On Twitch. Yeah. Oh. Well, and he's uh, he's taking commissions, right? So those commissions. Yeah. For like I don't know, 20, ten grand or something like that. Is it ten or is it like twenty? I thought it was like twenty thousand bucks. Yeah, maybe twenty. Yeah, twenty. Did you request one for yeah. me, Sean? Told you to put one in. It's the price of so a card. Pay for it. I'll, I'll, I'll pay you back. I'll Venmo you, maybe. That's the price of a Ven- uh, of a uh, a Tesla. 
ですね。Well, right now I'm drawing all these buildings, but I'm eventually gonna knock it out. Let's, I'm gonna play、uh, with some of these levels or opacity. There we go.、Oh, wow. That's an atmospheric perspective, right? Yeah, they're gonna be. It's not gonna be.、Uh, I mean, it's a one fifth of the page. See the page. So you see, I'm wasting too much time on this background. It's gonna be covered by word balloons and. Are you gonna、um, lose the figure on there? Like where is it? Oh, I'm、figure? gonna draw the figure later. Cause Sean's like saying it's storm, so、He's、trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> If I draw it out, you'd be like, "Oh, I know who that is," and you'd be like, "I thought storm yeah, was with、know, the X Men." In the old days, if you were like Alex Toth or、um, uh, I don't know any of those old timey pencilers, and even now, like what I do is I, I would draw that figure, and then if there's a background that's that complicated, it always. Gives me a lot of anxiety because you can totally lose your figure and all that stuff in the background. Yeah.、Uh, but with technology, you can just kind of half tone the background so it it solves that problem. Yep. But you know, John Paul would never do something like this. He would still figure it out by <clears throat> ex- like strategy and design so that there's only black or white on the page, and you can approximate some gray with hatching or whatever. But for the most part. That was black and and white, and then for him it was mostly black. Yeah.、Um, but he he wouldn't allow himself to do this type of um the atmospheric perspective where you just blur or make the backgrounds in a grayer color.、Um, taking the so easy. So I was wondering what you thought about that. We're taking the easy way easy way out. In one way it is, but then <clears throat> if you don't do it, you're also ignoring the technology because it it is extremely effective. Yeah, of a way, because it looks more like、um, real life. It took a, you know, it took a while. He started drawing a little bit digitally later on,、um, and he was coloring digitally. So, I think,、uh, who knows?、Um, I, I think he's he's st- he's still he would still be drawing traditionally.、Uh, I think it's just the degree of how much he adds digital to his work.、Uh, Do you ever think he would do this trick, or I don't know?、Um, because it's it's so hard when you have that as a background, and then you have that that full figure that's it doesn't really dominate the page. Like, how do you make it so that you don't lose that figure? Well, I think he would do it probably in colors, or and because his colors were very、uh, silhouettes, or even、uh, the renderings. So I do think he would do some kind of、uh, silhouetting or rendering and shapes, and not necessarily draw every single detail,、um, and at some point、uh, simplify the shapes to a、uh, to kind of match a particular mood.、Um, I know one thing that some people do, I'm <coughs> sick. They have a complex background. It's just a kind of um. Kind of fade it out as you get close to the figure, so it's like that figure has like a white halo around them. Yeah, I do that. I'll, I'll, I'm、halo. gonna put what I'm gonna do here is I'll show you. I won't draw the figure, but、uh, let me see if if I, for instance, if I were to draw the figure here, and how do you know it's a female? Maybe it's a maybe it's a dude.、Uh, what if it's the Hulk? Here, I'm gonna draw the Hulk. Or you know you can. You can lead your eye to that figure by having that lightning strike that's going to come down and then go right in your feet. Well, it's the Silver Surfer coming down. So if I'm drawing the Hulk,、uh, <clears throat> and, and Hulk- there's always the white silhouette. Works. Uh, actually, I wouldn't do the white silhouette now. I mean, it's uh, I've been doing this in a few of the, my、uh, books here. Let me see. Let me quickly block this in.、Uh, this would be more like a John Paul. 
that works because the background is half toned. Yeah. Uh, and if you didn't half tone it, you'd have to put him in the the sky, the sky around him, so he's surrounded by the building. So if you can see this, uh, if you can see this uh, panel here, uh, right? What I do is here, uh, in between this background, these background layers, uh, I'm going to put another, create another layer, and I'm going to use this brush I like to use, Luminance Nebula. I'm going to do this. Make sure it's not that big. Oh, it's that. That, that tool, the one that freaks out Courtney. I hate it. <laughs> So it's like a little mist. You see this mist? It's Harry Potter wand. So can you guys see that? It creates even yeah. more of a... It's like the poster for the exorcist. Yeah. <laughs> so if it was in color, you know, sometimes I'll do it in color. Um, just so it'll be easier for Marcello. Anyways... Anyway. <coughs> so now you have the Hulk there. Yeah, I don't have Storm anymore. <laughs> could be Storm. She could just be working out really hard. Storm, it's Rogue actually. She absorbed the powers of, of the Hulk. Oh. Okay. Uh, what are you gonna draw, Bernard? Huh? I don't know. Let's see. Let me let me get out of this page here. It's what are gonna we gonna be do? Digital drawing, right? Yeah. Um, I could do this. What is that drawing there on the paper? I think there's like a little doodle of a happy face. Oh yeah. Is that a glitch again? No, I was doing a drawing for my mom. Yeah, I was. I can draw Bernie. If you guys want to see Bernie. This is a, a drawing I'm doing over uh, the Purdue Pete drawing that I did earlier for March Madness. Not much basketball drawing. Uh, is Bernie? Bernie is the mascot for the Miami Heat. Oh. Um, oh, as in he burns. Uh, so I was thinking about doing this and posting it if the if the heat make it <clears throat> any further, or I can uh, Bernie Sanders. No, you guys aren't feeling it. <laughs> you have boobs. Uh, yeah, yeah. What happened to the the? the I thought this was um. Battle boobs. Of the boobs Battle of the boobs. Okay, yeah. well, let's. What's a what's a character I can draw that has some big boobs? Um. Or they could be small you know boobs. What? You know, anything, anything more than a handful is too much. If you draw them with big boobs, so. You want to draw the the female Silver Surfer? Oh yeah, that's cool. Do people mad at you? Female oh, Silver well, Surfer. All right. Uh, I, I drew the fem female super surfer, and then the comments just went crazy. Really? I just and then so I drew the male super surfer, and then I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think why people are just very so triggered by it. Why are they? Why are they so yes. triggered? I mean, she was an actual character in the book, right? Yeah. But even then, it's just she, wrong. She yeah. But someone said that um, there's no need to fix what. I don't know who the original creators were, Kirby mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. And then in the end, they said, like, I hope you lose your right hand or your dominant hand. Like, really? Jesus <laughs> Wow. What the hell? Sean, I thought you were a fan of the right wing. I mean, I thought the right wing was a fan of yours. I just wanted to draw I th the female Super Surfer. I thought you had fans in the right wing. Wow. Uh, yeah, you know what this is? Me, like, Sean. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have friends there. <laughs> Sean has friends but, everywhere. Um, so that's the thing you're looking for, like where you're drawing, um, popular pop culture characters, they call that bandwagon art and they look down on it. So a lot of times I would draw, or even like the latest thing where I put that, um, Deadpool and Wolverine, yeah. giving, Wolverine uh -huh. giving Deadpool a piggyback. They're like, 
and and then I put that Madonna song in there, like old band bandwagon art. You know? Really, I, like, I gotta I gotta read your comments. You saw. <laughs> and it's a demonstration <coughs> of low value to like a pander like that. Ooh, I'm gonna go argue with people in the, your comments Whoa, section. Wait, I didn't Sean, know that. This is great. Yeah, I love it. I'm looking for things to argue about. I find like uh, a. I, I'm getting uh, I'm arguing about people with uh, uh, on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, um, I think one time I posted something under Bernard's post, and uh, it wasn't anything necessarily bad. I don't think, but since you know we joke around, I think somebody might one of his fans might have taken it easily or took it hard and. Uh, and I think he posted something kind of bad back to me, or commented something bad back. Me? And then oh, uh, somebody else. No, not you. So this this guy, this random yeah. person. I posted some, something. I forgot what it was, and then he said something like, "Oh, I don't know." And it was kind of like, "I know, I know, Bernard." Like <laughs> it's like, I think he just thought I was just being rude, maybe. I don't, but I don't think it was even. It could even be taken that way. It was weird. I was like, okay, well, guess you get all kinds. That's the weird thing, you know. Like you were just mentioning, it's very left leaning, but then you have these people that, you know, will be rude, kind of like in video games. You know, they harass <coughs> women sometimes, mm. from, you know, over the internet, and I feel like it was. People, people get kind of crazy when it comes to comics. James Quo says, um, what if I drew the Hulk kissing Silver Surfer? Yeah, I'm all for that. So the Silver and Surfer is male, but he's gay. Yeah. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to get in a lot of hot water for that. I mean, if you want to poke a fight with people, they, they will show up for that. Well, I don't think I'm getting any activation on my, on my Instagram these days. Uh... So, you need to do more bandwagon art. <laughs> yeah, I, I stopped using hashtags. Um, I feel like they're useless, anyways. The hashtags. Just the I last few. I feel like few. it's the reels, and like you have to start using their special, like meta AI, like things that they have. Well, they want yeah, they want me to boost my posts. They, you know, they're trying to like get me to pay. That's what happens when you become a check marker, Bernard. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to boost. This guy's guy special, and he's rich now, so we're going to try to get as much money out of him. Uh, what about Brokeback Silver Surfer? That's the funny thing about anime and manga is, like, they make characters gay all the time there's so much gay fan fiction about it and even, yeah. even regular comics but not as and then and then those yeah. people will tout the success of manga but then manga is like extremely uh progressive yeah manga's yeah it's always been gay i mean unfortunately well, sometimes in bad ways like they'll have kind of more of a trans character that's like the evil character yeah, well, I mean, uh, Gachaman, the uh, the main villain in Gachaman is like, kind of, uh, right? Yeah. What is that yaoi stuff? I mean, that they there's a whole term for it over there's, there. There's there's like boy the love boy comics. Yaoi? Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Matsudo works like, at Meta. I like yaoi. It's, it's super gay. I will just read comics of dudes having sex all the time. <laughs> It's it's they they actually have really good stories. I'm I'm actually not lying. I I have read some, <laughs> and really really good art too. But um, I don't know. It's a very it's a very popular. Hmm. So Sean, your Silver Surfer got uh got lambasted. Well, a lot of things I do now, <coughs> um, even like that latest. Um, Wolverine giving Deadpool a piggyback. Yeah. Some, some guy just accused me of emasculating Wolverine and he didn't like the fact that I was making him appear to be gay in that thing. Really? Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, then he, you know, those, they put on those, like those gifts or something like that where 
um, and, the, and one of them is said like fuck you or something like that I'm like wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> does he know the actor is actually like pretty openly bisexual I think he is who isn't Hugh Jackman Hugh, Hugh Jackman bisexual is he yeah yeah, I, yeah. yeah he's I thought he was pretty openly bisexual. It's weird. It's like, uh, I've seen him, but like, he'll play Wolverine, and then, and then, like, on some talk show, he, he sang Oklahoma, you know, from the, yeah, the, he show, did, the uh, Broadway he show. He does musicals, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think musicals is a. Uh... Well, if you, if you sing Oklahoma. Kind of gay. But I did go to an art high school, and I would say there was a. A uh, higher percentage of uh, musical theater majors that were probably on that side of the fence. Yeah, I mean they're they're known to be gay. That's not that's not. Uh, thing, I have I have a quick question, Sean, the female silver surfer or your Jimbo, uh, is her? I guess I should look up the reference. He has hair, which is weird. She has hair? Uh, what about the surfboard? Yeah. Is it is it different, or is it the same surfboard as... Oh, yeah, I don't know about that. <clears throat> it's, it's a chrome, you know what? <laughs> it's more like a cylinder. <laughs> it looks like a tampon. Just draw her. <laughs> why would she have... <laughs> oh, my God. Why would she have hair? She has oh, hair? <laughs> Um, probably she didn't sh- shave her silver surfer head, I guess. Does she have silver surfer pubic hair? She has hair? Oh. <laughs> no, she shaves that. Her surfboard vibrates. <laughs> are there, are there silver surfer, like, kids? Are there silver surfer, like that, like that, you know, the, uh... Like silver family? Yeah, is there like a what Silver Surfer family? Is there a Silver Surfer? Is he the only one of his kind? Or are there... Is there like a species of Silver Surfers? You understand what I'm saying? As, asking? Yeah. How is... I'm, I'm forgetting the lore or how <coughs> they were created. You know, one guy got mad at me when I did silver for a while back i said i just just kind of making a joke i said like the, a lot of people don't know that silver surfer has a real name it's harold harold of galactus <laughs> and then the guy's like no it's norn red oh. and he got like really pissed off like i didn't know my marble yeah <laughs> you can't tell any jokes john Let me look at actually Herald of Galactus. Uh, he's a one-off. Yojimbo says so. There's no like uh, Silver Surfer, like uh, like a brother or like an uncle or you know. <laughs> like when Chewbacca can go back to his planet and there'll be like a whole bunch of yeah, like there's a whole race of like Chewbaccans. What are they? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is a, a planet full of Chewbacca's. Yeah, because there's baby Chewbacca's. The Ewoks are supposed to be the, the planet full of Chewbacca's, but then they change it to Ewoks because I think maybe you can sell more toys that way. I used to like the Ewoks. I don't know why people hate Ewoks. I thought they were really cute. <laughs> I used to Thank like, you. I liked their song, Nub Nub. And then it was sad, you know, like they were winning the movie Return of the Jedi. They were beating the stormtroopers, and then they started getting killed, and like they were dying. And then, then it's like the music turned, and it's like, oh man, they had the they had the uh, the advantage of surprise, but then there were no match for the technology of the stormtroopers and then they started killing they won eventually right so oh yeah they started winning yeah but that was because then the rebels started coming back <coughs> but, um uh, i googled 
Silver Surfer, and it came up with SilverSurfers.com, and I think it is a dating website for 50 and over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, when I was drawing Silver Surfer, I would look up Silver Surfer, and it'd be like this um, group of internet-savvy old ladies at nursing homes, and that's the, the, the name of their club. Oh, yeah. You know what? Um, I think I used to work for the company that did that. It's uh, it part of the wellness company, yes. Yeah, silver uh, or some, something. It was like a fitness thing. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I don't, yeah, I guess I don't have that anymore. Maybe. Didn't they? Isn't it a? Isn't it a fact that the the highest area concentration of population with STDs is at a senior senior uh, complex. What? what? The highest concentration of uh, uh, population oh, with STDs. STDs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. <coughs> going, they're going crazy. Oh, yeah. It's either that or bingo, right? So might as well. And then, I guess uh, the, the attitude must be like, "Hey, I can't get pregnant. So what the hell?" Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's very true. That is true. Or they're all they're. It's literally like dormitories for for old people. And Sean, nothing, can I just download your Silver Surfer drawing and then draw over it? Yeah. Let me do that. <laughs> that's fine. What do you mean? That that's a good pose. What are you doing? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Let me find Sean's. Didn't you just you were just talking about copying and, and tra tracing over? It. Yeah. We're gonna show the proper way of. Let me. Let me. And every everything I do seems to be like um, there. There's some comments of how perverted it is. Like even with him, like Galactus is looking at her rear end. I mean, he totally is. I mean, oh yeah, this one. Well, it's very. I think I got one of the poses that are very similar. Uh, uh, if you're gonna trace anything, flip it. Then no one will be able to tell. Yeah. <laughs> if you copy that, I'll be really pissed off at you. Oh, but if you do it like that. Yeah. No hey, way. I'm all for it. No way. You can tilt it so it looks like she's going up and yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is. It's a random surfer I saw on the subway. <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Let me. I think I got a pose already that's similar to that. No. Yeah, your pose is pretty cool. I think that one's nice. I like the it. Last this one. Was kinda cool. Yeah, I like it from down up. I think it looks like something I haven't seen. This one right now. Before. No. <coughs> that was the last one you did. Yeah, the very oh, last Oh, the one. very last. This one? Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, you're gonna look up look, look up her skirt. Oh, she's not wearing a skirt. She's not wearing a skirt. She butt naked. Her has no skirt. You're gonna be able to see her silver camel toe. <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep it in silhouette. What? You can do what? Crap? What do you mean? Don't, don't you want to sell this? I can sell the JPEG, right? As an NFT? Are those things coming back? Yeah. I think so. I guess we'll find out. I still got to rug people. Are the NFTs coming back? Um, sort of. Mm. I mean, not like cryptocurrency, but... Yeah. I should probably find what NFTs I have. Dr. Minai says he uses NFT. apps Glaze and Nightingale to protect my drawings from AI. Oh. <coughs> what is that? Glaze and Nightingale. Hmm. Wonder how that works. Me too. You know, I'm also about that Dachyon cover. 
Mm-hmm. So they had DC had those covers redrawn by professional veteran artists to kind of replace them. Right. And then they get put side by side, and he, honestly, you have to say that the AI ones just look better. I mean, objectively, it's just better. Um, and not that they should use it. It's just it's really hard to compete with them. Um, well, because I think the AI is, AI is learning off of um, of art germ stuff. You're, so it's just, yeah. it's a, you're 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 playing you're playing uh, football against a guy that's jacked up on steroids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, imagine uh, you in a moped and you're going against a guy in a ninja Kawasaki. Um, All right. Well, I'm, the thing is, I I do think it's better with a real human artist, but. Um, it just kind of sucks when there is um, when the when you know the AI one actually looks pretty damn good and so the reason you wouldn't do it is because it's cheating but you know yeah. I wonder if you can take your art right now on, on one of the many AI um, kind of platforms that fic- like does certain things with art and just say like hey improve this so it's still yours but maybe they'll add a touch of something I think that's what he did I don't think it's completely AI I think uh, yeah my suspicions looking at his work there's <clears throat> I've wanted to chime in on some of these internet arguments because I'll read some of the comments and they'll be uh, from fans and they'll be like well obviously he's shown uh, the pencil stages or the quote unquote pencil stages and uh, so he must be a real artist and you know he is a real artist I mean he does he does have skill he's not a complete uh, you know it's not like he's he came off the street and started dunking dunking you know on LeBron James or something um <laughs> He does have some artistic skill, uh, but I do think he uses something. Just as a, you know, a guy that wears black spandex uses photos to trace over. Oh, but there is one part of the, um, was it the Power Girl that he was? AI can't tell when there are flowy things. Um, mm, like yeah. There is a lock of hair, like a strand of hair that goes around all one thing like it's mm. four things at once that one line yeah. and that's something that AI does because it can't tell the difference between those flowy line, linear things mm, I think I know what you mean and that's what made the piece seem so exciting too because of the the you know all that right uh, I mean the Power Girl and the Wonder Woman were extremely and the Shazam were extremely powerful because of the uh Kind of the randomness and the energy of the yeah. Well, there's like a explosion stuff. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if or did you uh, did you freeze? Like, uh, can I hear you? Can you guys hear me? <coughs> it says you're back. Oh, it's freezing from time to time. Mm. Okay. Um. Yeah. There's also one part of, on this drawing where there's an explosion, and it's smoke coming up. But the smoke has some characteristics of cloth, and that's one thing AI can't distinguish sometimes when something is just kind of flowing and organic. Yeah. What it, what exactly it is? So the thing is, uh, what were they people say? People say uh, AI is trouble with hands. Uh, you can see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but eventually, yeah. and the other thing that I found that is that the AI has trouble with teeth. So. Teeth are on the face, and it does almost everything on the face. It does very well, except teeth. You can tell I, teeth. Yeah. The what is it? The the molar, the the vampire teeth. You know, if you have, and then you have uh, canine. the canines. It doesn't distinguish the canines as as accurately, and if you do the bottom row too, the bottom row of teeth is thinner, and there are canines on the bottom. But they're thinner than the ones up top, so you can look at the teeth, and you'll be able to see that uh, you can differentiate. <clears throat> look at that, that um, power girl. 
And also someone pointed out on the Wonder Woman shield um, that there is uh, symbols that are supposed to be um, letters. But oh, really? they look more like rune hieroglyphs because AI doesn't know exactly what letters mm. it's drawing. Here, here, here's my, my question is like, look, I think this guy can draw. I, now, you know, the level of talent is, okay, there's a limit to it, but the guy can obviously draw because he's shown him drawing, he's shown himself drawing commissions. He can't draw to that level, right? But if he runs it through AI, can't he go back and then read, you know, kind of <laughs> clean some of that stuff up? Or is yeah, he just too lazy? lazy. Mm. Right? La or, or is he just lazy, too lazy? Or or he can't see it. So, uh, yeah. What can you do? We're playing the game uh, with uh, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds. Trying to play the game the right way. Uh, but there are some participants that want to shoot up with the HGH. So. AI can't spell. That too. Which you would think that's the first thing that they'd be able to do, right? Well, it, it can understand letter forms when letters in artwork words mm. you know harder. I think it's funny how I've seen a couple posts on Instagram about um, people being like oh uh, AI made an Asian Barbie and she looks white and um, and people are getting like really upset over it <laughs> And it's like, it is still kind of crap. And also, like, Barbie's, in the, or like a, or a blonde hair, Asian Barbie. And I'm like, well, yeah. But who are you getting upset over? Like, who, who are you going to yell at? Like, why? The AI is racist, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's pretty notorious. Every, every AI that has come out before, like, the ones that could kind of a we can communicate with has turned kind of racist in a weird way so but you know barbie is notoriously blonde and even though there's different you know they have different barbies of course but then um but yeah it's just weird to how people are like ai turned it has aged in barbie blonde and it's like well yeah who are you mad at it's not like well, it's not like an artist did it. It's not like, hey, this artist was like, I'm going to draw an Asian Barbie, and then they made them blonde or made, made them look more, you know, Caucasian. It's like, this is AI. Like, what do you, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Who are you getting mad at? I don't know. It's so bizarre. Hey, is this a Silver Surfer? Uh, is she like a bad guy or is she a good guy? I think it's, it's a good guy. It was his wife or girlfriend? Sean, now how do you <clears throat> how do you uh, do this uh, metallic surface thing? Is there a trick? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I, I look at uh, well, I look at Olivier and Koi Pell, mm. and. Uh, a lot of times I would just do a search for the character like Silver Surfer and then flip through it and see someone who did the metal really well things now when you draw the Silver Surfer do you draw the ear? because uh, there's no ear there's no ear right? yeah 